take you and Sally for a ride. Well, I'd like to, Emmett, but Alexander Botts is in town, and we're expecting him. Do you still get letters from that guy? Oh, yes. And what letters? What's he doing now? Oh, well, he wrote me he's selling some absolutely sensational products. You know, he's a wonderful salesman. Oh, oh he's a salesman. Well, don't laugh. From what he says in his letters, he's a natural-born salesman. Huh. Well, I'll just take the pie. I'll go to Well, I was going to call on a prospect, but I guess I can always take time out for a piece of one of Ma's pies. Look! It's great to see you, Sally. Oh, it's good to see you, Alexander. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get my letter? Letter? Two a day. Come on, Pop. Let's go get that pie. Pie? <laughs> what kind of pie? Green apple pie. Green apple? <laughs> That's my favorite color. You talk about salesmanship. Say, I had a letter from the factory this morning telling me that I was out selling every man on the sales force. <laughs> if I wasn't a natural-born salesman, I wouldn't have been able to sell the Pleep Tool Company. Gosh, you must have had a fine commission. Why, that Pleep Tool Company is one of the biggest tool concerns in the country. I guess I did get a pretty big commission at that. I haven't figured it out yet. Guess I better. <laughs> Let me see. Six times six is 36. And four. FOB plus the insurance. Six, 12. <laughs> Almost forgot the zoning rates. Plus 17 and 6. <laughs> Plus 4, 6 and 8 times 7. There you are. There it is. What is it? Three dollars and five cents. Three dollars and five cents? Oh, Alexander, I thought you were selling something worthwhile. <laughs> oh, what are you doing, but selling bird seed? Bird seed, nothing. Now, folks, undoubtedly you want to know what this is. The idea of this little novelty is to bring you health. It opens the pores, clears the eyes, takes your mind off business worries, and last but not least, brings laughter back into the life of the working man. All you do, folks, is just to blow through the little pipe and attach the cork onto the hook. It's simple. Watch. There you are, folks. But don't take my word for it. Here, try it yourself. So this is what you sell. Well, but you're nothing but a peddler. Well, is that so? Well, let me tell you something. It takes real salesmanship to sell a thing like that. I'll tell you right now, Bots, I don't want my daughter to have anything to do with a peddler. And I'll appreciate it if you don't bother Sally anymore until you become a more respectable citizen. Come on, Emmett, let you and I go get a piece of Ma's pie. Goodbye, Mr. Bots. I hope. I'm a peddler, do you? Of course not, Alexander. Only selling little gadgets like that, well, well, it's not dignified. Oh, I see. Oh, gosh, I just happened to think I've got an appointment out at the hotel. I'm sorry, Alexander, but you really ought to get out and do something important. If you're going to be a salesman, well, sell something big, something worthwhile. Say, you don't have to feel sorry for me. I won't always be selling little gadgets. A natural-born salesman like me can sell anything. Steamship. That's it. That's what I'll sell. Say, that ought to be big enough for anyone. <laughs> you can't sell steamships. Be practical. No. Bridges? Bridges? Yeah, sure. Some people buy bridges. Oh, no. No? Well, and... Tractors. Earthworm tractors. That's it. That's big. That's important. That's worthwhile. Oh, that's right. Now you're talking. Can I have this? Oh, sure. Look, Sally, I gotta be running along, but I'll write to you. The next time you hear from me, I'll be selling earthworm tractors. I'm gonna make a big success of this. And when I do, I'm gonna come back for you. Will you be waiting for me? Why, certainly, Alexander. Yeah. Goodbye, Sally.
Alexander Botts listening. If you want to laugh, H.J., read that. Earthworm Tractor Company, Earthworm City, Illinois, gentlemen. I am a natural-born salesman, have a very quick mind, am honest and reliable. In fact, I have a positive genius for ferreting out sales. I became acquainted with your earthworms as a member of the motorized field artillery in the Army. I am an expert on tractors, as well as a super salesman, and I might add that I am also a master mechanic. When do I start to work? Very truly yours, Alexander Bartz. <laughs> Have you ever heard of this Alexander Bartz, Henderson? No, sir, never. And I think I know every tractor salesman of the country. This man's either a phony or a nut. Well, maybe you're right, but I like his letter. It shows the kind of nerve it takes to make sales. Let's give him a chance and see what he can do. Oh, now, please, Mr. Russell, not as a salesman. Well, now, let's see. Healy has been asking me for a mechanic, and Bartz says he's a master mechanic, doesn't he? According to his letter, he's a master of everything. Personally, I like a man who knows his own abilities and isn't afraid to tell them. I'm going to give him a trial. Okay, you're the boss. The son. Take a letter, Alexander Botts. I'm going to have him meet Healy at the Robert E. Lee Hotel in Cypress City, Mississippi. Alexander Botts coming. How do you do, sir? Are you Alexander Botts? That's me, brother. Well, I'm George Healy of the Earthworm Tractor Company. Well, Mr. Healy, how do you do, sir? Come right in and sit down. Thank you. Uh, I was just writing another letter to the home office. I understand, Mr. Healy, that you need a lot of help down here. Oh, you do, do you? Mm-hmm. And with me on the job, Mr. Healy, your troubles are over. Now, wait a minute. I think there's a slight misunderstanding. I've been getting along very, very well. I merely sent to the home office for a man to demonstrate a tractor for me. Well, I can do that and more. You're uh, new in the tractor line, aren't you? Well, in a sense, yes. And in a sense, no. But in any sense, selling is my meat. Mr. Healy? You see in me a natural-born salesman. That's very interesting, Mr. Botts, but I understood I was getting a mechanic. That's right, you are. You're not only getting a mechanic, Mr. Healy, you're getting a master mechanic. And think how much better it'll be to get a master mechanic who also is a super salesman. Now, where are those tractors? Let's get right to work on this. The tractor is down at the freight depot, but let's drop that for a moment. All I want to know is, can you operate an earthworm tractor? <laughs> can I operate an earthworm tractor? That's what I said. Well, generally speaking, yes and no. It says here that you were in the motorized field artillery, which used earthworms exclusively. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Mr. Botts, I don't like to doubt your veracity, but I don't believe you've ever seen the army. Oh, oh, you don't, huh? Well, just maintain your predicament. Let's take a look at that. I was company cook. Battery, 127th field artillery. A cook? Have you ever handled any kind of machinery? I certainly have. For two years, I sold the Jiffy razor blade sharpener. Well, this is grand, fine, splendid. Here I've got a tractor down in the depot only waiting for a man to drive it for me. I've got a deal all set with Jackson, the biggest lumber dealer in town, and then I draw a blank like you. Call me names won't do you any good, Mr. Healy. Just think how lucky you are to have me here to work shoulder to shoulder with you. With me on the job, this fellow Johnson is practically sold. The man's name isn't Johnson, it's Jackson. Well, Johnson or Jackson, they're all the same to me. I sell anybody. Excuse me. Just want to tell him at the home office that you've reported. Oh. What's in that bottle? Oh, shoe polish. Shoe polish in a scotch bottle? <laughs> oh, you poison me, you lunatic. You killed me and killed my sail. Say, I'll put your sail through better than you could have done it yourself. You stay away from my prospect. Just relax, Mr. Healy. I'll go right down there now. Get the tractor, find Johnson, and sell him quicker than you can say Jack Robinson. It isn't Johnson, it's Jackson. Don't you dare go near my prospect. <laughs> Mr. Healy, I'm an independent salesman. I take orders from no one. You come back here. Come back. Mister? No, thanks. Just breaking in a new pair of shoes. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, that's 
that's all right. What's the matter? Stuck in the mud? What do you think? Well, I think that just the right young man came along to help you out. Well, I don't think anything short of a derrick is going to get me out of here. We got a tow rope? No, I'm afraid I haven't. No tow rope. Well, stay right where you are. I'll be right back. Stop watching that clock. 
I was just going to remind you to take your pink pills. Oh. Mr. Johnson, as I was saying, the earthworm is... Young man, I have no use for any new fangled inventions. Well, save your breath. Well, but Mr. Johnson, the earthworm is no new fangled invention. Why, way back as far as the war. War? What war? What? Well, well, Mr. Johnson, the earthworm tractor has the most powerful motor in the world. Young man, if you were selling mules, I might listen to you. But motors, huh? Two months ago, someone finally talked me into buying a truck. And do you know where it is now? Do you? No, you don't. Well, I'll tell you where it is. It's buried up to its axles in mud down in Chippewa Swamp. Yes? Well, Mr. Johnson, may I make a little suggestion? No. What is it? Well, I have an earthworm tractor down at the freight station and get your truck out of that swamp just like that. You come along with me and I'll show you. And if I don't get that truck out of that swamp, <laughs> you can chase me out of town. No. I haven't got time to run you out of town. Oh, why don't you let him try it? That truck isn't doing any good stuff in the swamp. Why should I waste my time? There's no machine ever built that could stay on top of Chippewa Swamp. Mr. Johnson, the earthworm tractor can stay on top of a cup of coffee. And not a strong cup of coffee at that. Now, if you want your truck back in the service, I'm the young man that can help you. Oh, go on, Dad. It won't cost you anything, and you might get the truck back. Well, it's only a waste of time. But I'll go. You stay here. Somebody's got to watch that clock watcher. Come on, let's see that machine of yours, young man. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, don't look now, but your clock has stopped. See anything beautiful about it? Well, hop in and we'll take a little spin. But me riding that lopsided merry-go-round? No, sir. <laughs> Why, she's just as safe as your own front porch. Speak up, speak up. I say she's just as safe as on your own front porch. Well, let's go over there and talk it over. No, 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 Mr. Johnson. Up you go. And up, see Daisy. Up you go, sir. There you are. There's no trouble at all. I know I'm not going to like this. Oh, you'll love it, Mr. Johnson. Go right over there and sit down. Now. Well, now, here we are. Now, let's see. That is the choke, I think. This is the ignition, I believe. And <laughs> there is the clutch, I imagine. You think, you believe, you imagine. <laughs> Don't you know? Well, yes and no. Now, oh, yes. <laughs> there is the starter.
Mr. Johnson. Just relax. We'll have your truck out of here in just a minute. Just as simple as ABCs. will come out of the south road if it don't sink. Don't worry, the earthworm never sinks. Hop in and I'll drive you over there. Mr. Healy, everything is going to be all right. 
I was just writing another letter to the home office, explaining everything. Why, you idiot, you don't think I'm worried about the job, do you? I wasn't going to stay with her firm anyway. I've got a better proposition with the Elephant Tractor Company. Yeah? How about taking me with you as your mechanic? You? If I ever catch you in the same town with me again, I... Excuse me, Mr. Healy. Seems to be my busy day. How do you do, sir? Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I can explain everything. Explain everything about what? About your car, Mr. Jackson. Uh, Jackson? Well, you see, look, my company will pay for everything. My card. Oh, forget it. I'm insured. I came here to congratulate you. Congratulate me for what? That's the finest demonstration I ever saw. Yes, I guess it was. <laughs> but just the same, I'm fired. Fired? Well, I just wired an order in for six tractors. Is that so? <laughs> Well, whether you did or not, I'm still fired, Mr. Johnson. Not Johnson, Jackson. Are you Tom Jackson of the Jackson Lumber Company? That's me. I don't know why you went to see Johnson first. You can't sell him anything. <laughs> You're telling me. Well, anyway, you've got commission coming on six tractors. There. What did I tell you, Mr. Healy? Just as I promised you, everything turns out right. We've got commission coming on six tractors. Here's looking at you. Hey, Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Or, or, uh... Jackson! Oh, don't drink that. Why, Bots, you don't begrudge a six-tractor customer a little drink, do you? No, but... Well, so long, and thanks again for the demonstration. That's the finest liquor I ever tasted. Wait, Mr. Healy, you're not gonna drink that. Excuse me, Mr. Healy. Just send the bill to Earthworm Tractor Company. Oh, hello, Miss Johnson. Could you come down to the lobby for a moment? I'll be right down. Oh! You poisoned me again! <laughs> you big sissy. You knew all the time that was shoe polish. Well, here I am. I thought I'd drop by for a few seconds and tell you how sorry I am the way things turned out. I should have warned you that Dad has a ferocious temper. Oh, forget it. He didn't hurt me. Hmm, much. What really hurts is I lost my job. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wish there was something I could do for you. Oh, uh, that's all right. Well, now that you've lost your job, what are you going to do? I don't have to worry. A natural-born salesman like me can always find something to sell. The thing is, I, I hate to leave this town now. Why? Oh, I, I don't know. Well, this is the same as any other town, isn't it? Well, in a way, yes. And uh, in a way, no. There's more no than yes, I guess. What's your first name? Mabel. Mabel. Gosh, there's something about the name of Mabel. Telegram for Mr. Box. Telegram for Mr. Botts. A telegram for Mr. Botts. Oh, boy. Excuse me. How do you spell that? Uh, with a B. With a B? <laughs> I guess that's for me. There you are. Gee, thanks. Don't give it a thought. <laughs> hmm. I wonder who this can be from. <laughs> Why don't you open it? <laughs> That's a pretty good idea at that. <clears throat> Listen to this. We have reconsidered our decision. Re your discharge. Stop. You are back on the payroll as a full-fledged salesman. Stop. Proceed to Smedleyville. Instructions to follow. Gilbert C. Henderson. Wow. Gee, I'm glad. <laughs> well, I guess they know a natural-born salesman when they see one. Wait till I get to Smedleyville. I'll knock them dead. Say, I'll sell tractors to people in that town that don't even need them. Why go to that trouble when there's someone right here in this town who needs them? Oh, lead me to them. Is there someone that I overlooked? Say, I'll sell them before I catch the train. Who is it? My father. Oh, well, I don't think I'll have time on this trip, but someday I'll come back and sell him too. Well, I'm afraid it might be too late then. You know, someday some real live wire salesman is going to come in and show Dad where he's losing money by not having tractors to work his timberlands. What do you mean, live wire salesman? Well, I mean someone who won't run away the first time he's turned down. Turned down? Oh, 
Oh, I was knocked down. Dad owns half the timberland around here. If he ever decides to buy tractors, he'll have to buy an awful lot of them. It'll be a big feather in the cap of the salesman who finally sells him. I could sell him. I wonder if I ought to take the time. No. You'd better go on to Smedleyville. It'd probably be too big a job for you. Too big? Say, no job is too big for Alexander Botts. And just to prove it to you, I'm going to stay right here and sell your father, Mabel Jackson. <laughs> Not Jackson. Johnson. We are pleased that our earthworm, RD-8, has lived up entirely to your satisfaction. We trust that... H.J. H.J. What's the trouble now? The only trouble we've ever had around here, but Read that. Yes, sir. The greatest tractor prospect in the country, Sam Johnson, is right here in Cypress City. I've decided not to go to Smedleyville. I think it best that I stay here and make the sale. We'll let you know how many I sell. Very truly yours, Alexander Butts. Sam Johnson, the one man that every tractor salesman in the country gave up trying to sell ten years ago. I'll wire Butts to proceed to Smedleyville at once. Now, wait a minute, Henderson. This fellow Butts sold Jackson. Maybe he can sell Johnson. Give him a chance and see what he can do. I think it's a waste of time, but you're the boss, H.J. I don't think it's a waste of time. I'll bet you right now, at this moment, Butts is selling Johnson. <laughs> Now you get out of here! And don't come back! Oh, you're not going to stop trying now, are you? Oh, I don't know. I, I got a wire from the factory this morning. I think I better get down to Smedleyville. I was afraid the job might be too big for you. The first few times he threw me out, I didn't mind, but I'm beginning to think that he don't want any tractors. Of course, a master salesman will find some way to show Dad how necessary tractors are to his business. Say, listen, I'm a natural-born salesman. That's even better than a master salesman. Salesman can sell them, so can I. Say, I'm going right down there now and come out with an order for 72 tractors. Oh, no, Alexander, not today. No? Why not today? Well, you see, we're moving. Our house is up on rollers and ready to be moved to the other side of town. Oh, is that so? What's the new address? 352 Spruce Street. I can remember that. Dad's more upset than ever. I think the $500 it's costing is the real reason he feels so badly. $500? Say, excuse me, with an earthworm tractor. What? Oh, nothing. When are you moving the house? Tomorrow morning. Dad and I are going to stay at the hotel tonight. Close that door! You want me to catch my dad in the cold? Mabel! Yes, Dad? I've decided not to go to the hotel tonight. Oh, but we've arranged to have all the utilities cut off. We can't stay in the house without any light, gas, or water. I'll well, arrange to have them put back on again. I'm a sick man. I just caught a cold from that door being open. I'm nearly dying. You wouldn't want a dying man to go to the hotel, would you? Of course not, Dad. I'll call them. But they won't be able to move the house tomorrow. That's all right. Let them move it the next day. Stop watching that clock. Dad. How are you feeling now? What do you ask me that for? You know I feel terrible. I told you not to eat that steak tonight. At least not the whole two pounds. That had nothing to do with it. I would have felt terrible anyway. Quick 
rocks Tibbet. Mabel, where's Tibbet? In Asia, Dad. That's right. I didn't think you knew.
asked who was Sally. She's a girl in Frozen Falls that I promised to marry. What? You see, when I left Frozen Falls to make my way in the world, I promised Sally that someday I'd come back and marry her. Alexander Botts never goes back on his word. Well, I hope you two will be very happy. I won't be able to see you tonight, or any other night. advanced sales reports indicate that this is going to be one of the biggest years that the Earthworm Tractor Company has ever had. Telegram, Mr. Henderson. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Listen to this. I agree with you that Johnson is not a good prospect. I'm proceeding to Smedleyville by way of Frozen Falls, where I am going to marry a girl by the name of Sally. Stop. Congratulate me. Alexander Butts. <laughs> I certainly feel sorry for Sally. You can wait right there, if you will.
disagree with you. I think Johnson is still a fine prospect. I'm proceeding back to Cypress City, where I'm going to marry a girl named Mabel. Stop. Congratulate me. Alexander Potts. Mabel. Is that man crazy or am I? I wouldn't know. trying to get in touch with Mabel, and her father won't tell me where she is. Do you know? Well, I know she bought a ticket for Chicago. Chicago? Yes. Where's she going in Chicago? Well, she didn't say, but she's got an uncle there, and I imagine that's where she's bound for. Yeah, what's her uncle's name? As far as I remember, it's Johnson, too. Johnson? Well, that's easy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Glad to know you, Mr. Butts. Do you expect to be in Chicago alone? Well, maybe yes and maybe no. I see. It all depends. Yes, sir. Boy, take Mr. Butts' bag to 502. Where's the nearest telephone? Uh, just around the corner, Mr. Butts. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Excuse me. I'm looking for a man named Johnson. Can you tell me how I can find him? Well, the Johnsons in Chicago are as thick as the Smiths in New York. And you know how thick the Smiths are in New York. Which particular Johnson are you looking for? Well, he, he's got a niece in Cypress City by the name of Mabel. Well, now, ain't that nice? I've got an uncle in Topeka, Kansas, named Oscar. Well, was that so? Don't you know this Johnson's first name? No, I... I do you mind if I look at your book? Well, why not? I bet there's a whole page full of them. I'm sorry, it doesn't answer. Johnson. Johnson, Johnson. Johnson, Johnson, Johnson. Johnson, Jack. Do you mind if I use your telephone? Well, go ahead, you're paying for it. Three, four, one, two, please. Oswebo, three, four, one, two. Just a minute. Hello. Is this Mr. Aaron A. Johnson? Hello, Mr. Johnson. This is Alexander Botts calling. Have you a very beautiful, charming niece by the name of Mabel? This is the aquarium. Well, then you have no niece. Four, two, oh. Hello? Is this the home of Thomas Johnson? Is Mabel Johnson there? She is. Hello, is this you, Mabel? This is Mabel. Mabel, this is Alexander. Alexander, bots, bots! Watch to you, mister. All right. Crystal, five, nine, five, two. Is this the home of Ulysses Johnson? Have you got a niece by the name of Mabel? You haven't. Well, thank heavens you're here. What a night. I'm exhausted. Zebula Zachary Johnson. Get me crest 4436. Sorry, the phone's been disconnected. Well, I guess I'm through. That was the last Johnson in Chicago. No, not the very last Johnson. Oh, yes, it was. No, there's one more, Miss. One more? 
Who's that? Mabel Johnson. Mabel? Mabel! Gosh, I called every Johnson in Chicago trying to find you. Where are you? I'll come to you wherever you are. Well, just a minute. What about Sally? Oh, that's all a thing of the past. She don't mean a thing in the world to me. What made you change your mind? Why didn't you marry her? Well, when I got there, she was already married to another fella. Oh. Oh, so Sally was already married. Yeah, wasn't that funny? And then you decided to look for me. Yes, and Mabel, I could hardly wait till I found you. Alexander Botts, I hate you. Mabel! Operator! Gosh, I don't know what she got mad at. Mabel! New starters played an improvement, eh, Hank? H.K. H.J. What's the trouble now? Listen to this. Trace Potts to Kramer Hotel Chicago, where he reserved room, then disappeared. Stop. When last seen, he was going into a telephone booth. Wells Detective Agency. If they can't find him in a telephone booth, they might as well give up. If I ever get my hands on him, I'll... Oh, <laughs> Botts. <laughs> You're right. My girl Mabel left for Cypress City, I hope. I'm following. Stop. Understand Cypress County in market for tractor. Stop. Wire Kramer Hotel $162 telephone bill. Stop. Keep in touch with me, Alexander Bott. Now that we finally found him, we can fire him. Oh, will I? Henderson, let us send another man down to get that order. I have a man available right now, but don't worry, I'll go down there myself. I wish I could have seen him just once before we fired him. I wish I could have seen him just once before you hired him. Tractors. Huh. Stop watching me. I just wanted to tell you, Mr. Johnson, that those two tractor salesmen are still waiting. Well, send one of them in here. <laughs> well, Watts, I'm glad I was here first. I've got a luncheon date with an old friend of yours. Yeah, who's that? Miss Johnson. Miss Johnson? Is she back in... Mr. Healy, you can come in now. Thank you. <laughs> She's back. <laughs> expect me to hear you when you whisper. I said my name is George Healy of the Elephant Tractor Company. Tractors, huh? I hate tractors. But I represent the taxpayers of this county and I've got to listen to you. How much is your tractor? Well, now, the kind that your community needs costs only $4,750 FOB. I ask you the price of your tractor. I said it costs $4,750. Oh, fine salesman. Don't even know the price of your own product. I said the price is four. Never mind the price. Have your tractor ready for a demonstration this afternoon. Now get out of here and send another fella in. Crab. I ain't neither. Fine fellow, that Johnson. Speak up, speak up. Johnson, come now. Let's let bygones be bygones. After what you did to me, I don't see how you got the nerve to come in here. All right, Mr. Johnson. I apologize. I demand you apologize to me. All right, then I apologize. So you won't apologize, huh? All right, don't. I ought to kick you out of here. But as road commissioner of this county, I can't be prejudiced. What's the price of your tractor? Is your tractor any good for road building? <laughs> what kind of an engine's it got in it? What's the horsepower? All right, all right. I'm a sick man. I've got to have my lunch. You know where to bring the tractor for a demonstration. Be there on time. Do you mind if I use your telephone? No, go right ahead. Get me the Robert E. Lee Hotel, please. Robert E. Lee Hotel. Alexander Botts inquiring. Have there been any telephone messages for me? 
No, sir. You're sure Mabel Johnson hasn't called? Yes, sir, I'm sure. Uh, but there's a telegram for you. Oh, yes? Will you read it? You are absolutely, completely, and finally fired. Stop. Kindly don't annoy our customers. Stop. Another man is taking over your territory. Gilbert Henderson. Thank you. How do you do, Mr. Johnson? My name is Henderson. I represent the Earthworm Tractor Company. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, I'm very, very happy to find you alone, sir. Now, I won't take up but a minute of your time. I just want to tell you a few facts about our product. Speak up! Speak up! I understand that you've been ill. How do you feel today? Oh, I feel terrible. I always feel terrible. Oh, that's too bad. Mr. Henderson! Whatever happened to that young salesman, Alexander Box, that used to work for you? Salesman? He was the world's worst. We fired him. Yeah? Well, I think you made a mistake there, Mr. Henderson. Alexander Box impressed me as being a natural-born salesman. Yeah, that's what he thought. Well, let's not bandy words. I'm a man that judges by results. What I'm interested in is your small tractor. Where will the demonstration take place? Where? Oh, oh yeah, where? Well, now let's see. Here we are. Here. Here's Cypress City. There is the railroad station. Now, you take your small tractor and run it right down over the ramp. Continue right straight ahead due west for four and a half miles. You'll come to a large sycamore tree with a hornet's nest. <laughs> I don't think you'll stop there, but you'll go right straight ahead till you come to a big stump. There you are, there's the stump, and that's where you stop. You mean that's where the demonstration will take place? Oh, no, 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 but that's where we're going to meet you. Now, do you know how to find the place? Oh, surely, surely. Well, that's good. And I'll keep this map so we'll be able to find you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I'll be there. All right, do it. fellow citizens, as chairman of the Board of Road Commissioners, I have been chosen to make the final decision as to which tractors we will buy by Cypress County. <laughs> I have mapped out a very difficult course for these tractors to give us a demonstration. <laughs> Just one more thing. I have practically made up my mind which tractor it will be. But, in all fairness, we will go on with this demonstration. why you want to be mad at me. If you'll just let me explain, I know we can patch this up. Gosh, Mabel, I, I can't eat, I can't sleep, I, I can't even think. Well, that's not unusual, is it? Well, you just wait till I get your father on my tractor. Seems to me you had him on your tractor once before. Oh, all right, if that's the way you want to act, go on. But I'm going to sell your father, and after I sell him, you know what I'm going to do? No, you don't know. Well, I'm going on to Smedleyville and sell some more tractors. And that's one of the reasons it has so much power. Well, young man, it looks like you've got something here. Yes, Mr. Johnson, and you'll never regret your decision. Mr. Johnson, will you pose on the earthworm? No, I don't want to, but I guess I will. And you, none of your monkey business.
Anderson, uh, both be blown up. That hill's full of dynamite. Well, somebody has to warn them. I wouldn't go up there if they had to blame you. But don't go there. Look at the citizens, as chairman of the Board of Road Commissioners of Cypress County, Alexander Butts, you're going to pay for this. You hear what I'm saying? What? I say you're going to pay for this. Speak up, speak up, I can't hear you. Why, I can hear you. I'm cured, I'm cured. I say I can't hear you, speak up. I'm cured, I, I can hear you. Stop whispering. Oh, boy, this is the greatest fact in the world. I'm going to 
going to buy six of them for the county and eight of them for my lumber company. What did you say? Ryan! Alexander! Are you all right? All right. I just bought 14 tractors from this young man. Oh, I always knew you were a master salesman, darling. What? Darling! Louder! Darling! Louder! Darling! Louder! Darling! Oh, darling. I can hear that. Oh. 